now, preview time. So let's take a look at what's coming your way. What's going on everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade J.J. Williams, and although Christmas is over, we still have a few more holiday selections to discuss here on Renegades Reviews, and today is going to be the last of what I've called the Christmas Chestnuts. I'm going to take a look at a little known film called It Came Upon... The Midnight Clear, starring Mickey Rooney, Scott Grimes, Barry Youngfellow, George Gaines, Annie Potts, Lloyd Nolan, Gary Bayer, William Griffiths, and Alicia Cook Jr. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. Like I said in the introduction, Christmas is over. It was yesterday. But we still have about a week's worth of holiday films to take a look at as we wrap up the month and the year. 
Today's is a little known film called It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. And it's it's the last that I consider a Christmas chestnut, if you will, at least for this month. Let's get into it here, shall we? Our movie opens with an introduction from Robbie Weston, who tells us that his friends think he's crazy. He begins to tell us a story that happened at Christmas the previous year when he was only nine years old. The story is about he and his grandfather, Mike Halligan, whom he refers to as Papa. Now, Papa is a retired New York City police officer who moved to California in order to live with Robbie and his family. Robbie's mother, Kate, his father, Rick, and his sister, Missy. After Mike's wife, Robbie's grandmother, passed away. While shopping for a Christmas tree with Kate, Mike kind of makes an off-the-cuff comment about how he won't be here for Christmas anyways, referring to the fact that he's supposed to take a trip with Robbie to New York for the holidays. However, while hanging up the Christmas lights, Papa suffers a heart attack and dies suddenly. Mike makes his journey up to heaven, but can only think about getting out and back down to Robbie. So Mike's able to strike a deal with the Archangel in order to get just a few more days back down on Earth. That way he can have his Christmas in New York with Robbie. In return, Mike will search for a missing angel who is using the mortal name of Wiley Boggs. Mike awakens from his deathbed, and the family is understandably confused. Mike takes Robbie, and they fly out to New York for their trip. Now, Rick is understandably upset at the situation, as he feels that Robbie has been kidnapped, while Kate is just concerned with her father's health and well-being. While Papa is showing Robbie around New York City, they notice that the city doesn't seem to have the traditional Christmas spirit that Mike is always boasting about. They go to Mike's old police precinct in order to see if they know anything about Wiley. Mike's old captain is able to find out that Wiley Boggs had been arrested the day prior for drunk and disorderly conduct, and because of his claims to be an angel, he was transferred to Bellevue Hospital. Wiley is able to use his angel powers to get released from Bellevue just before Mike and Robbie arrive. Meanwhile, Kate, Rick, and Missy prepare to board an airplane to New York in order to find Robbie and Papa. Mike then takes Robbie to see Monsignor Donahue, his old pastor, and Mike tells Monsignor Donahue his story about his heart attack and going up to heaven and seeing the archangel, basically confirming everything that had been preached to him over the years before asking Monsignor Donahue to hear his final confession. Upon returning from the church, Robbie and Papa discover that the rest of the family has arrived in New York. Mike sneaks away from the family the next morning in order to follow up a lead on Wiley Boggs, while Rick, Robbie, and Missy prepare to go sightseeing. Now, while out sightseeing, Robbie spots Wiley, so he sneaks off to follow him. Mike sees Robbie tailing Wiley and joins him in the hunt. They're finally able to stop Wiley, and they proceed to question him, and they discover that Wiley gave up on his assignment of trying to spread Christmas cheer in the city. When Wiley leaves, Robbie and Papa decide to try and spread the cheer themselves. They end up stumbling upon Cindy Mills, a New York City television reporter who was assigned to come up with a human interest piece for the Christmas Eve television broadcast. Mike takes Cindy's microphone and proceeds to tell the city what is wrong with them. His speech is so powerful that it reinvigorates the crowd on site as well as the television viewers at home, causing the entire city to turn around and find the spirit that had been lost all season. After accomplishing what was Wiley's mission, The family goes for a ride in a horse-drawn carriage, which has been a family tradition ever since Papa lived in New York City. 
Once the ride is complete, Rick, Kate, and Missy get out of the carriage, and Robbie and Papa are able to go for a ride, just the two of them. During the final ride, Papa passes away once again, peacefully, having fulfilled his deal with the Archangels. Robbie then tells us that he saw Wiley Boggs one more time after that, at Papa's funeral, and our movie comes to its end. Now, while maybe not as popular as Home Alone, or The Santa Claus, or It's a Wonderful Life, or Miracle on 34th Street, or even Elf in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, this is a chestnut to me and my family. I remember my dad and I discovered this film on VHS. It was originally a made-for-TV Christmas movie back in the early 80s. I want to say 83, 84, somewhere in there. And we found this on VHS one year, shopping. Fans of Mickey Rooney, my dad going all the way back to when he was a child watching Mickey Rooney and having exposed me to some of those films at that age. So we're like, okay, a Christmas movie with Mickey Rooney. We'll give this a shot. And it was so good, man. It was so heartwarming. It was so touching. The story of a boy and his grandfather, who he loves dearly, almost more than he loves his own father, if we're being honest, and you watch the film, see how everything is portrayed. But it's just this really tight bond between grandfather and grandson. And how the grandfather is willing to do anything to not break a promise to his grandson. So much so that he negotiates a deal with the angels in heaven to get just a few more days to try to spend time with him properly and fulfill this promise of a Christmas in New York. And he agrees to try and find this archangel. And then everything they go through, their adventures, their their antics, their shenanigans while in New York. And you see New York, which is world-renowned as this hard city. And you see that side of it because it's missing the Christmas spirit and they're able to turn things around. It's such a great heartfelt story and I wish it was something that more people knew about. I'd love to have conversations with people about this movie, but so few people actually know about it. It is so good. It's on YouTube in its entirety for free. Please, I, I highly recommend that y'all seek this film out and give it a watch. If not now, since Christmas was yesterday and is officially over, check it out for next year. Please, I beg of you. I wish that whatever company owed the rights to this would put this out on DVD or Blu-ray. Because the VHS release is the only official one I've ever seen for it. So, being able to come across a copy to have and to preserve and to be able to add into your collection, if you don't have a VCR, you're pretty much screwed. And that sucks because this is such a heartfelt story that I feel like everybody needs to see. So good. When it comes to my rating for It Came Upon the Midnight Clear, I give it five stars. That is how highly I think of this film. There is not a moment where I get bored or I wish the story would progress further and stop dragging. The chemistry is so good, especially between Papa and Robbie and even Mike and Wiley. The chemistry is just so good there. The Monsignor and Papa, great chemistry. So, so good. Such an underrated gem. And that's why I waited till the day after Christmas to do this one. But please, if you hold any faith in what I tell you on this show, on my reviews, search this film out and check it out. For those of you that have seen it came upon the Midnight Clear, which I'm not expecting many of you to have seen it. What do you think? 
let me know. If you're watching the premiere, leave your thoughts and comments over here. If you're watching on demand later in the day, leave your thoughts and comments down here. Let's have that conversation, that discussion, that debate, that interaction that I'm always asking you guys for in the comments below. And make sure you guys tune in at the top of the hour right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, as well as over on the Jeff Meacham Network as we wrap up our salute to Disney's greatest soundtrack songs. Today we'll be discussing part three from 2001 till now. Pay no attention to that start time. Start time is 2 o'clock Disneyland time, 5 o'clock Disney World time, because this episode is almost three hours long. It is so good. There's so much packed into it. 2 o'clock Disneyland time, 5 o'clock Disney World time. Myself, Jeff Meacham, and our special guest discussing the final chapter of Disney's greatest soundtrack songs. And then tomorrow, back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, will be another edition of Renegades Reviews, and we'll be discussing Muppet Family Christmas, starring Jerry Parks, Jim Henson, Frank Oz, Dave Goles, Jerry Nelson, Richard Hunt, Steve Whitmire, Carol Spinney, Catherine Mullen, Karen Prell, and David Rudman. And then, at the top of the hour after that, it'll be time once again to open the doors to Stat Boy Sports Bar, featuring Dory Lou. The food is hot, the beer is ice cold, and the seats are warm, so pull up a bar stool and engage in some professional sports conversation with Stat Boy Mike and his regular panel of guests. You don't want to miss out on any of that coverage right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, on the Jeff Meacham Network, across the Jeff Meacham Network Multiverse of Media. We've still got about a week's worth of videos and content here before we say goodbye to 2022 and hello to the new year in 2023. So you don't want to miss anything that we have left for you this year. Therefore, Make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure that notification bell is turned on so you don't miss out any time a video drops right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel or anytime we go live, as is the case with Open Mic Night, Stat Boy Sports Bar, pay per view PLE coverage, etc. Share these videos with your family, friends, loved ones, co workers, movie fanatics, cinephiles in your life, fans of Mickey Rooney, fans of Christmas movies, fans of Annie Potts. Fans of New York City, anybody you can think of that would enjoy my content in this video, share it with them. It's the only way we're going to boost up my visibility in YouTube's algorithms so I can eventually get monetized and make some money on this channel. Thank you once again to everyone who joined me and tuned in today. It means more to me than you'll ever know. And I will see you guys next time.